Hi everyone. <laughs> so this will be the last video that I upload today, and uh, if you thought the last video was the deep end, this is now the ocean. Um, this is the card game that I have been making for the last five years for the Wheel of Time. Um, it's actually completely based on the books, and I have four sets created, but we're not going to get into all that uh, fluffiness. We're going to talk strictly about how to play this game. So here I have two actual decks uh, set aside um, for the purposes of this video, and this is the game board. So to go over briefly, um, players will determine who goes first. Um, rock, paper, scissors, roll a dice, whatever. And um, then the game proceeds as follows. So the first thing that players do is you have a 50 card deck here. You're going to uh, search for any card with a gold frame. Now you can look at the cards um, as you're progressing and all these cards are based on instances in the books. So this is only up through Shadow Rising, so mild spoilers for anybody that's looking. Um, but you're going to pick a gold card to start your um, to start your game. So for instance here, I'm going to select Matt, and he's going to go right there. And we'll just flip him over. But uh, you actually wouldn't show this to your opponent to start. So the opponent is also going to do that, but we're only going to show my actions for the time being. So then you're going to give your deck a shuffle. So in order to do that in Tabletop Simulator, you just pick up the deck by holding it, and then you shake it, and the cards will randomize. Next, you as the, we'll say I go first, uh, the first turn player is going to then look through their pile of locations and hazards. And we're going to select three of our locations to try to win in this game. So for instance, I'm going to select Jara. I'm going to select Tarvalin, and I'm going to select the Blight. Now these three cards, if you look, when you flip them over, um, would go in this direction. So these would normally be face down when you're playing against another player. So for the sake of time, I'll just put them here like this. And my opponent would pick two of their cards from their little environment stack too and they would fill up the remaining two spots. After this was chosen, my opponent would pick three of their orange cards to put on pieces over here, and I will select um, two of my orange cards. So in this case, I'm going to pick up uh, the separation card, and I'm going to pick the ambush card. And those are going to, let's just say I want to play against my opponent, I'm going to put them directly parallel to my opponent's cards. Now, once that's done, the game is pretty much set up. Now you're not seeing the other side, so I will go ahead and change to be their team. I apologize for the, uh, for the camera angles and everything, but let's just do this real quick. I will search for two environment cards. So we're going to pick the Aerith Ocean and we're going to pick the River Aranin. Those will be my two environments, and then my three hazards are going to be the ways, are going to be Insanity, and are going to be uh, Illusion. So again, I only got to pick two of these, so these will go here for the other player. And again, both players would not know what's going on with the other player's cards. And my opponent would also do the same thing that I did. It starts their deck for a gold card, so in this case, they're going to pick Matt as well. But their Matt is different than my Matt. Now, they'd shuffle their deck, or if you could, you know, pick up the thing. Yep, they shuffle their deck, and game would the game would commence by both players revealing their face-down cards, which would be, in this case, both of our mats here. And then they would draw 10 cards. Now this game by far and away is the most difficult um, game that I have on the docket for people to be able to play. However, it is also, in my opinion, uh, one of the most fun games that I've ever made. 
So again, this mat will go in our hand. Our opponent also knows that we have mat, but we would then draw our cards. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards. So once you have your ten cards, both players would then reveal their cards to the other player. Now these are a little off, so we'll fix those. Oops, there we go. And then the environments would also reveal. Oopsie, sorry about that. I'm still getting a handle on the controls, so please bear with me in this video. And I do, again, reiterate, I do everything in one take. So we now have our environments set, as well as our hazards that we're playing into, and I would get to go first. Now, the way the game is structured is you are attempting to claim these territories over here. So, for instance, to claim Tarvalin here, we have to have a total, we're not gonna zoom in, we have to have a total of 10 politics and 16 knowledge. That would claim us Tarvalin. To get the River Aranen, we need seven combat points, 12 politic points, and six knowledge points. And furthermore, we have the Blight, which needs 25 combat points. We have Aerith Ocean, which is eight combat, nine politics, and 10 knowledge. And then finally, we have Jara, which is six combat, seven politics, and 12 knowledge. Now, all these cards also have other cards contributing to the row. So for instance, this row where we need combat, politics, and knowledge, has a, whoop, this is upside down, I apologize, has an advantage in combat, but a disadvantage in the other two. So cards that are combat affiliated will get a bonus on this row, but everything else will get a negative. And that's pretty much what these cards do. They impact the game board in some capacity. So, moving on, um, we then would proceed to gameplay. So both players have their hand of 10 cards, and the 11th card being their starting card. So each player is permitted to play one card from their hand every single turn. And you follow the effects of the card. So certain cards will say when played, do something, while in play, do something, and you follow the rules of the card. So even though the rules state you can only play one card a turn, you are permitted to break those rules provided that the card says you can. So for instance, I can only play one card a turn, but the women's circle here says that I can play another copy of this card from my deck. So that means that I can put this card down and actually get two cards out of out of one card. Uh, another example would be um, Bella, who actually says, when you play a brown unit, you can reveal the card. And if you do, you can discard it and you draw a new card. So even though you're only playing a brown card, you get the advantage of getting a new card in your hand. And then finally, we have other, uh, other things that need to be brought up, which is the tiers. So every single card has a tier on it, in addition to its symbol that dictates what it contributes to that row. So for instance, you have combat units which have the spear and, sh and buckler, you have political units that have the crown, and you have knowledge units that have the book. Now, each of these symbols is manipulatable by some cards in the game, and you pay attention to um, things that can change aspects of the game as the game progresses. But in addition to that, you also have tiers in the game. So for instance, we have our women's circle, which is a bronze card. Now bronze cards are unique that they can have two copies in the deck, while every other type of card can only have one copy in the deck between silvers and golds. You also only have so many copies of silver cards and so many copies of gold cards in your deck. So gold cards being the most powerful of the cards are limited to only nine copies in the whole deck. And silver cards being the second most powerful are limited to 15 copies in the deck with the remaining 26 cards being bronze. So if I was to start this game out, I would want to look at what I need. So for instance, we have the women's circle, which lets me put two cards and gives me some card advantage. So I would take a look at the rows. So I need political and I need knowledge here. Well, everything gets minused on this row because of the ways, but I actually have a move. There's two ways I could go about it. You always put the cards closest to the victory condition. And when this card is put down, I get to search for my deck 
and find another copy of the women's circle and put it, I'd say, on the same row. And that would complete my turn. Now I'm down to only 10 cards instead of 11. And the opponent would at that time get to play one of their cards. However, I also have these little calculators down here for people to be able to keep track of score. So for instance, the women's circle here contributes three points and three points to the row. So out of my 10 points that I need for politics, which is crowns, I have six points here, but each one is getting a negative because of the ways. So these are only worth two points apiece, meaning that I get a total on the dragon row in politics of four points. So of my total nece necessary to get 10, I have four contributed on this row. And then the opponent would get to take their turn. So we're gonna change to their team. And they would get to play a card from their hand. You'll also notice that some of the colors are different. And these two decks actually have two completely separate color schemes. While I'm allowed to play green units, this player chose to play red units. While I play gray units, this player plays blue units. And when I play brown units, this player chose yellow units. Also, I have black units in my deck, and this player has white units in their deck. You'll notice these turquoise cards. These are actually items. So instead of physically putting them on the table, you get to use them as an effect that would trigger on the battlefield based on the appropriate things being done. So in this case, this opponent can choose to do a couple options. So you have the game play state exactly how you see it here. But on the flip side, they can option to try to challenge this row, meaning that they're going to try to remove my value from the row by knocking out the cards, or they can just option to go to other places. So for instance, they have this parent here. It says, once while in play, if your opponent plays a bronze or silver item, you can negate it by lowering his power by two. So if I wanted to take a look at this row up here, this player could possibly put Perrin here, which means that he has a universal effect that's applying if I try to play an item card, and he's staking some claim to the Blight instead of to Tar Valen. So we also can look real quick, and this is the Fang Row. So we would place on the Fang Row the four points of contribution that Perrin is giving to to the uh, to the row there. So again, this this user interface is actually made more for people that are playing against each other, so you keep track of your own numbers. But this is a rough example of how the game works, and just to show that I have gotten a functioning uh, version of the game up and running in Tabletop Simulator, and I'm very excited for that because it means that I can play with people like I would at JordanCon. Um, this game is usually pretty interesting whenever people sit down to try it out. Um, and the only other rules that have to be explained are, one, the um, hands, you do not keep drawing cards. You will only draw cards once a row gets claimed. So sometimes there's a strategic advantage to letting a player take a row because it lets you get new cards in your hand. Um, furthermore, once a row is claimed, like for instance, let's just say that my other team by some miracle just managed to pull this one out right? Um, this is now my row. So we'll just say this for some reason made the row mine, okay? Um, what would happen is, is I would claim this card as the player. So this is now one of my victory points. I have a victory point. The other card would go back to the other player, but as face up and it's kind of dead and out of the game. And all the cards here would be removed from the game. And by removed from the game, I mean they're put in the little discard pile face down. So these cards are no longer in the game at all. This happens for both players. But then for each card that's put into the into the discard pile face down, because the row was claimed, both players would draw that many cards. So in this case, we would draw five new cards. And then the player that didn't win would get to pick a new, um, a new victory card from their pile and put it into the and put it onto the table as the new option and they put it face down 
and then the other player would do the same for the hazard and that would go there and then both players would reveal their new their newly acquired victory cards that are dictating how the game plays and play would continue so this is a rough overview of how the game works and I apologize that I still haven't fully mastered the user interface um, for Tabletop Simulator, but I will advocate that this game does work um, with what you currently have. Um, also that drawing five would be simultaneous, so both players would draw five, not just, um, not just the player that took the row. So this player would have five new cards in their hand too. Um, the only other rule that needs to be dictated is the rule of facing. So in this case, this card is upside down to me as the opponent. So that means it's under my opponent's control. If I was to play a card that said change the allegiance of a card, then this card would flip over and now it's under my allegiance. So it would be contributing to my points instead. So that is the rough overview of the Wheel of Time card game. I know that this one also took a little bit longer than the Snakes and Foxes example. I'm more than happy to let somebody build a deck if they're interested. I have an option for that. However, it's a little too massive to show in this direct video, but I have all 400 cards in this system, so any player can build any deck. Um, for instance, I did it earlier where I will just show very briefly um, that I have a saved object in here of the yellow of the gold deck right here, and it's right there. So this this deck is right here, and I put this together with my uh, with my um, with my actual thing that I set up to build decks. So it's a little small. I just have to make it a little bit bigger, and I can render any deck that someone desires. I can collaborate with anybody that's interested to be able to uh, build their own custom deck if they're interested. This is a gold deck that uses brown, uh, gray, red, and white as the color scheme. And it actually is more of an Aiel themed deck. So um, again, I hope this video was interesting. I hope everybody is excited to possibly try this game out if they're interested during our interviews. And I hope everybody has a good rest of the day. This will be the final video for today and more to come soon. Thank you very much. Have a good rest of the day.